Amethyst geodes and crystals were added in Minecraft 1.17 and are not only a beautiful decoration, but also have a lot of great uses, so in this video, I'll explain it all. So amethyst geodes generate at Y30 and below. This does give us a very wide range of areas where we could possibly find them. 19 out of 20, or 95% of amethyst geodes, have a side that is broken, and so it's not a full circular amethyst geode. However, there is a 5% chance to somehow run into a fully solid amethyst geode. And the size of amethyst geodes can vary a lot. For instance, this one right here isn't very large. It's barely 8 blocks tall and 8 blocks wide. They can get even smaller like this one here, but they can also be larger. Like for instance, this exposed as well as incredibly large amethyst geode. You can see on this geode, at least a third of the geode is gone. It's kind of open like this. But as well as that, this geode is incredibly large. This one has a diameter of about 11 blocks, and the other one had a diameter of only 7. So it is almost twice the size. And there really is a great diversity of these you can find. Especially considering this one, for instance, generated on the upper end of their distribution, between Y30 all the way down to the bottom of the world. And they are very likely to be found when you're low down. So oftentimes when you're mining in low down caves or maybe even strip mining, it is not impossible to run into a geode. Because there is a 1 in 24 chance for a geode to spawn inside of a chunk at any level, which means that it is very common to find geodes. And because of them being that common, it's actually nowhere near rare to run into a geode that intersects another geode right below it. So for instance, this one right here, we have an effective double geode. In the actual generation of the geodes, there are three layers. There is the outer layer, which is a layer of smooth basalt. Then going one layer deeper, we have the soft calcite block. And in real life, calcite is related to marble. Although inside of Minecraft, nether quartz does still resemble marble a bit more than calcite does. And inside of that calcite layer, we have a layer of amethyst blocks. But not just amethyst blocks. 8.3% of those amethyst blocks generate in as a budding amethyst block. And I'll now explain what the amethyst block does. Nothing. Well, not exactly nothing, but the amethyst block does not have a lot of features overall. There's no crafting recipes with the amethyst block. The only real benefit of the amethyst block is that it's good for decoration, as if you walk on top of it it makes sounds. If you punch it with, let's say, an item it makes sounds. If you break it it of course makes sounds. And if you hit it with a projectile, it'll also make sounds, somewhat similar to the breaking sounds, so a little bit larger than just the standing on top of them sounds. And also placing them will make a sound, so if you like the chime-like sound and the color of the amethyst block, it is a great decoration. But as a whole, it does not have any uses. And you might think, well, because of the chimes, there would be a corresponding note block. But unfortunately not. Here is the standard note block sound, and putting it on top of amethyst, we also have that standard sort of piano sound. And so there really is no unique use of the amethyst block outside of decoration. However, what does have a unique use is the budding amethyst block. But tell me in the comments below, do you enjoy building with the amethyst blocks? I found they can definitely be a good building block, but of course they are somewhat situational as you do not always want to be hearing those. Now what does have a unique use outside of decoration is the budding amethyst block. So let's take a look at the budding amethyst. The budding amethyst appears to be very similar to the standard amethyst, but it has sort of a large dark X shape on it. Now this is supposed to be what the amethyst crystals are growing out of like this, and you can see that line up there, the crack line up with where the plane of that crystal is. But beware, the budding amethyst is breakable, but you cannot get it, even with a silk touch pickaxe. If we break one of these limited supply budding amethyst blocks, they will just disappear. What if we try and push the budding amethyst block? Well, we can get ourselves a piston and a lever, and if we put the piston right here facing the amethyst, and we put a lever down and we flick it, basically that amethyst block will just disappear. Now, of course, you can push standard amethyst if you want to, but that budding amethyst, if tried to be moved, will simply disappear from its current position, as if you had broken it. And so when finding an amethyst geode, you want to treat it like a mob spawner, where you don't break any of the limited blocks like these. And it's sort of a farming area that once you've found one, you could base maybe a little area around it. And why is it a farming area? Well, because the budding amethyst grow crystals out of every single exposed side. And you can see that happening right now. 
This is a smaller crystal. I believe it's the medium amethyst bud. There's also the large amethyst bud. There's also the small amethyst bud. And finally, it grows into the full-sized amethyst cluster. And basically, the way that the game works is it randomly picks a side of the budding amethyst to grow something on. But if that block is covered up, it just won't do anything. So for instance, let's say this block right here in the ground, only one side of this is exposed. So let's say the random tick picks this, which is about every 70 seconds, and it picks this side of the block. Because it was not air exposed, there was a block here, it just won't grow anything. Let's say the next time it picks this block, and it picks this side of it, which is also covered up, also nothing will happen. But then maybe the third time it picks the top side, then we will have an amethyst crystal grow here of the small amethyst bud. The amethyst buds, once they appear on the side of these, or even if you place them on top of these at any stage, they will start to grow. And they will grow in the same way that new of these would pop up. So for instance, let's say this one's right here, and a random tick picks this block, and all the sides are blocked off, and it picks this side, well nothing will happen. Let's say the next time it goes here, and it picks this side that already has a crystal, and this crystal will grow one stage forward, to go from, let's say, the medium amethyst bud to the large amethyst bud. And so more or less, when you find an amethyst geode, what you want to do is fully expose every single side of these blocks, breaking all the other blocks if you want to, and making sure not to break any of the budding amethyst blocks. Now it can be difficult to do so, and sometimes the budding amethyst like this one here is fully surrounded, so you want to be careful not to break this rare and limited block, although the amethyst geodes themselves are not really rare. If you have one of these very close to your base, you want to make sure that you can keep these handy, as more or less the more sides are exposed, the much faster this will grow. So for instance, the average amount of time for there to be a crystal on just one side, from nothing to fully grown, is the same chance for that to be on every single side, if you have every single side being uncovered. And this is actually how you make an amethyst crystal farm, is by breaking all the amethyst blocks, except for the budding amethyst here. And then you can go back through here and there, and grab all the fully grown amethyst crystals. But let's talk about the amethyst crystals. The amethyst crystals are a very interesting item, because what they drop depends on how you break them. And they don't drop anything if they're not silk touched at the first three stages. That is the stage of the small amethyst, the medium amethyst, and the large amethyst buds. And you can notice right here we're breaking these, and just simply nothing happens, they disappear. However, were we to break a fully grown amethyst crystal, it will drop us the amethyst shard. The amount of amethyst shard that is dropped is dependent on multiple things. So the first thing is, if that amethyst crystal is broken by a means that is not the player, so let's say a piston does that, then the amount of the crystal that drops will only ever be 2. You can see right here we had 24, we now have 26, so it dropped 2 of them. And if that fully grown crystal is broken by hand, it will drop 2 every time as well. However, if a pickaxe of any type breaks one of these, it will drop 4. So even a wooden pickaxe, stone pickaxe, iron, whatever type, we'll break this right here. You'll notice it dropped four amethyst crystals. There's no variability, it's four every time. However, if you want to get more than that, you can use fortune. So we'll get our fortune pickaxe here and break the amethyst crystal, and you can see that time it dropped quite a bit. And basically the way that this works is that there is a 20% chance when breaking these with fortune to get 8 crystals. There's a 20% chance as well to get 16 crystals. And there's even a 20% chance to get 32 crystals when breaking just one amethyst shard. That means that if you're really lucky, you can get yourself stacks and stacks of these with only a few fully grown crystals. And the remainder is a 40% chance of still getting the standard 4 crystals. Which means you could also break these with the fortune 3, and it would seem like it's doing nothing for a little bit of time. If you want to get the actual crystals for decoration, simply break them with a silk touch pickaxe at any stage. That can give you all the crystals that you want, and you can place these down on basically any block. It does not have to be the budding amethyst. It can be more or less any block you would imagine, so it's not really like most plants where let's say it has to be on top of a certain block. These crystals can be great decorations anywhere, and if you happen to like the look of it, you can do this at any stage, even the initial small amethyst bud, medium amethyst bud large, and of course the full grown amethyst cluster. Alright, so that's how you get amethyst shards, and that's how you turn a geode into an amethyst shard farm. But what do you do with the amethyst shards now that we've collected them and made a farm for them? Well, there are only three crafting recipes that use the amethyst shard. 
The first one is making an amethyst block. So if you want to have a massive amount of amethyst blocks for a build, you can set up a giant amethyst shard farm, and four of those will turn into one block of amethyst. And the average of breaking one of these crystals with fortune being about nine of these crystals, per every one of the amethyst clusters you see, you can get an average of two of the amethyst blocks, which means it is fairly easy to farm a large amount of these over time. The second thing you can do is craft the spyglass with two copper ingots as well as an amethyst shard. Now funny enough, this recipe does not work oriented the other ways like this. It only works with the amethyst shard above. So how does the spyglass work? Well, right clicking will zoom in to a far away area on the screen. And we also have this overlay pop up, but if you're on Java, you can press F1 to get rid of that to make it similar to like the Optifine mod zoom, although this is definitely a bit further than that mod zoom. And you can zoom in to see things. Now, the amount of zoom is very interesting. It is exactly one tenth of your current field of view. And so the idea behind that would be let's say that our FOV right now is on Quake Pro, something really, really far, and we zoom in. We're not actually zooming in that much because our FOV would go from 110 to 11. Now 11 is of course very zoomed in still, but nowhere near as zoomed in as let's say if we go to FOV of 30, and then at FOV of 30 it almost looks like we're zoomed in already, and if we hold right click, we are literally at the FOV of 3 degrees. So for instance, these pigs that look like they're quite close, if we change our FOV back to 80, and then we done right click, you can see they're actually quite far away, and are really nowhere near us. And so by knowing that 10% rule, you can know what amount of FOV you're looking at, so for instance here, that might not be super close, but if we were to change our FOV and zoom in, we can see that much better, and we can even get rid of that overlay to see that far away amethyst crystal forest that I made. The next use of it that a lot of people don't know about and don't use is the tinted glass. If you have four amethyst shards that are surrounding a piece of glass, that gives you two tinted glass, which means technically the amount of glass you have is doubled, but you're also consuming those amethyst blocks. So I guess the idea would be four amethyst shards, makes one amethyst block and of course one amethyst block plus one glass block should give you two blocks so we're going to grab this 50% amethyst 50% glass block of the tinted glass now the tinted glass is an item that I have really not seen many players utilize as it is sort of a niche item but one that I think deserves more recognition now basically the idea behind tinted glass is that it stops light from passing through it doesn't really stop light from passing through as if it did it would be pitch black and invisible however it does make the light level in the game not pass through. So for instance, you can see that right here. We can still see, as of course the player can see at light level zero, but right out here it is light and inside of this room it is dark. And that's because although you can see through this glass, you cannot have light pass through this glass. And what this is really useful for is several things. But to start off with some interesting facts about tinted glass. So for instance, if you break it, you notice here I'm breaking it with my hand. I'm still getting that glass back, which is an incredibly useful thing. I have no idea why this is the case. Maybe because the amethyst crystal reinforces it. I'm not really sure. But either way, you can do that if you want to place it and break it again. As well as that it sort of has a purplish tone, which does make sense as it's partially made with amethyst. You can even see right here the room is light, but once we block the light there, it is now dark. And the biggest use of this is to observe mobs and mob farms that need to be in a dark area, but you don't need to be in a dark area. So for instance right here we're standing in a very dark place, but that spider spawner is surrounded on all sides by the tinted glass, and so because of that we can watch our spider farm work if we built one here but we do not have to be in the dark ourselves, so we can make this area safe, where the spiders are is still dark. So for instance, let's say we put a torch on the other end and we went like this, you can see it's light outside and inside, and if we had our torches here with this exposed, you'd also see some of the light passes through there, but if we were to block that up, then it is fully dark inside of there, so it's perfect on observation windows for mob farms but as well as that it's great for house decorations. We could have an interesting skylight in our house, like I've put in this villager house, where none of the light from inside of here escapes out, making our view a bit harder to see. But we have this really beautiful skylight here to see the night sky. And of course the uses are really endless, but in any scenario in which you want an area to stay dark, but you also want to view that dark area from a light area, that's your perfect scenario for the tinted glass. Now that's not a lot of uses for amethyst, so thankfully Mojang has 
has recently added one more use of the Amethyst Crystal, and I'll go into that one right now. Well, if you're in the newest version, 1.19.1, and you play a music disc with the Lays nearby, the Lays, much like what parrots will often do, will start to dance, like this Lay is sort of doing right here. Well, if you right-click on the Lay with an Amethyst Shard, the Lay will duplicate. We can see that right here. They just split in two like that, and you can do this every five minutes. This is the only way of getting more lays. This is also the only mob in the entire game that duplicates instead of is bred with two different animals together. I think there's two reasons for this being different than normal. The first one is the fact that lays are sort of meant to be shown as an otherworldly mob. I do think lays will eventually be part of maybe a new biome in the game or something else, as they're shown to be kind of a new part of the game. But I think the other reason is that lays are rather rare, and so by making them able to duplicate instead of just being bred. It means that if you only have one Alay to start out with, you can still get more of them, and you do not have to have the requirement of two Alays, which makes it much easier to get yourself a steady supply of Alays instead of requiring yourself two to begin with. But this new use of Amethyst Shards is definitely very useful if you want to get yourself a bunch more Alays that will not only dance to the jukebox like parrots do, but will also get you more and more of them infinitely if you want to duplicate them every single five minutes. I hope you enjoyed that amazing amethyst guide. If you did, make sure to press the like button and subscribe to see more content like this. Goodbye.